Purpose is the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Magaziner, seek recognition. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that the gentleman from Rhode Island, the Honorable Gabe Amo, be permitted to take the oath of office today. His certificate of election has not arrived, but there is no contest and no question has been raised with regard to his election. Without objection. Will Representative-elect Amo and the member of the Rhode Island delegation present themselves in the well? The member. All members will rise, and the representative-elect will please raise his right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God? I will. Congratulations, you are now a member of the 118th Without objection, the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Magaziner, is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the people of Rhode Island's first congressional district have elected a representative with the character, the credentials, and the commitment to be an effective member of this body from day one. As one of the original 13 states, Rhode Island has been electing representatives to the House since 1790. And in those 233 years, Rhode Island has never sent an African American or any person of color to Congress until today. But Gabe Amo will be the first to tell you he did not come here to make history. He came here to make a difference. Make a difference for working people like his parents who immigrated to the United States from Ghana and Liberia. Gabe's mother, Weedy, is a nurse. His father, Gabriel, runs the family liquor store. They came to America because they believe in the promise of this country. They settled in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, a diverse blue-collar community of brick mills and triple-decker houses where people value a hard day's work. This is where Gabe Amo comes from, and he has chosen to devote his career to public service, working in the Rhode Island State House for then-Governor Gina Raimondo and in the White House for President Obama and President Biden. And by the way, shout out to the staffers who do not get enough credit in this town. Can we have a round of applause for them, please? Now in Congress, Gabe is ready to fight for the America that inspired his parents all those years ago. An America where workers can get fair pay and benefits and the right to join a union like his mother did. An America where immigrants like Gabe's parents are welcome to this country with kindness and not with cruelty. An America that stands with democracies and not dictators. An America where freedom means freedom for everybody, including women, to make their own health care decisions and LGBTQ Americans to marry the person they love. And an America where we have the God-given right to choose our own leaders and not have the results challenged and denied by the losing side. 
Now, I have known Gabe Amo since we were both teenagers, and I can tell you, he has the values, he has the commitment to America, and he has a love for service that runs deep. He is the right person to serve in this House at this moment. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce, for the first time as our colleague, the gentleman from Rhode Island, Gabe Amo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Magaziner, for the warm introduction. And thank you to Senators Jack Reed and Sheldon Whitehouse, who, alongside Representative Magaziner and I, make up our small but very mighty Rhode Island congressional delegation. And of course, to my predecessor, former Representative David Cicilline. I'm grateful for your service to Rhode Island. I look forward to our work together in both of our new roles. To my family, friends, community leaders, and all those who have supported me along the way, thank you. And of course, thank you to the people of the 1st Congressional District and those across Rhode Island for giving me the opportunity to serve in the people's house. I want to tell you a story about Rhode Island. Reverend Marlon Van Horn was elected to the Rhode Island General Assembly in 1885, making him the first black person to serve in the state legislature. Just think, Reverend Van Horn was elected as a black man nearly two decades after the end of the Civil War. In an 1887 sermon, the Reverend said, I believe the day is coming, is not far off, when in the Commonwealth of Rhode Island, the stomping ground of soul, liberty will become the home of the free and the land of the truly brave, the home of the free where fair play in all walks of life will be accorded. Those words are at top of mind for me today. Reverend Van Horn's dream and the dreams of those who have called Rhode Island home across generations allow me to stand before you today. And while we have not arrived at our final destination in this project of our democracy, I am optimistic. As a Rhode Islander, it's easy for me. After all, our state motto is hope. It is hope that led my parents to come from West Africa, my dad from Ghana, my mom from Liberia, to pursue opportunity in the greatest country in the world. But this is not just my story. It's a Rhode Island story. It's an American story. And that shared story is why today I am proud to be the representative from Rhode Island's first congressional district. And what is beautiful about hope is that it cares not about your race, your religion, your gender, or where your ancestors came from. This belief has inspired people who arrived in Rhode Island from Italy and Ireland. Portugal and France, Dominican Republic and Haiti and Colombia, Armenia, and yes, countries in West Africa, and so many places in between. And I, of course, must acknowledge those whose family branches extend from the native tribes of our shores to the settlers who came for religious freedom, to those who did not choose their journey because they were enslaved people, but whose hope persisted nonetheless. Together, and why I'm here, is that we ensure our great hope for the future is met with profound action. Action to protect and strengthen retirement security, support our seniors, create economic opportunity and good paying jobs, secure reproductive freedom and keep politics out of the doctor's office, ensure the livability of our planet for our children and their grandchildren, ban assault weapons and end gun violence, and stand up to the threats facing our democracy. So this hallowed space, this House floor, is where we have always had to work vigorously towards the promise of our nation's highest ideals and aspirations. And I cannot wait to work on behalf of the people of the 1st Congressional District. Everyone from Woonsocket to Newport, East Providence to Cumberland, Providence to Bristol, and of course, the great city of Pawtucket. 
So Rhode Island, thank you for putting your trust in me to bring our values of hard work, grit, determination, resilience in the face of adversity all the way from the ocean state to the halls of the United States Congress. I will work hard for those people in Rhode Island, those people across this country every single day. So thank you for this privilege. And Mr. Speaker, I yield back.